Hi guys, I'm glad you're all here. Thank you very much for joining me. I generally don't report the earthquakes because there's so many that happen in Texas and it's all because of the uh, oil and gas industry, the wastewater disposal. You can see all the platforms here. This earthquake was at 6.16 p.m. yesterday there in Texas local time. There are a lot of faults in Texas. Um, it's because of the collision between the plates when um, yeah the continents were moving. Let me bring this out. Many of these uh, faults have not been active over for over 300 million years until they started uh, pumping in the uh, wastewater disposal. I want to come over here. I had to go to the Wayback Machine about the uh, faults that are in Fort Wayne and Dallas, Texas. I drew out two of them. This one here is called the Big D. And then I drew out the uh, airport fault. And then we got another one down over here that comes up and around. This is from the collision when the continents were moving. And basically the Gulf of Mexico slid up and collided with Texas. In the last week alone, there's been over 62 earthquakes within this location. We got Texas and Oklahoma. Um, and then a few down here by San Antonio. The largest was a magnitude 3.3. Like I said, that was yesterday and two people said they felt it. Let's go to the felt report. They gave it an intensity level of 4, I believe. Yeah, intensity level 4. Here we got Big Spring, um, Knox. Let's see. Another one, intensity level three, and this was intensity level four, which means it was felt indoors by many people, outdoors by a few. At night, some of them may have been woken up. Dishes, windows, doors were rattling, and automobiles would have been rocking noticeably. I'll give you links to all these documents, but uh, this paper here was published when I don't see a Oh, okay, 2017. And it talked about the earthquakes they were having in the Fort Worth Basin. Yeah, they don't want to talk about this, but there was a study that showed that uh, recent earthquakes on ancient fault lines that had not been active for over 300 million years had been reactivated by the oil and gas industry. The reason behind the seismic events uh, that were near Venus and Irving or Irvine, Texas, was wastewater injection that has forcibly caused the long inactive faults to move. I found another paper, also dating from 2017. SMU seismology research shows that North Texas earthquakes occurring on dead faults. Yeah, and this comes from um, USGS, surprisingly. You know, for many years, USGS in cahoots with the oil and gas industry would not admit that the wastewater disposal was causing the earthquakes. And here it shows these faults um, were inactive, were dormant for over 300 million years. The Texas Standard back in 2016 acquired somehow maps that were produced by the oil and gas industry. Here it says new map takes a closer look at earthquakes, fault lines, and fracking. And that was um, again 2016. It says here the new map show for the first time in great detail a network of faults that lie underneath Dallas-Fort Worth area. Um, Anna Kutchman from the Dallas Morning News says the maps were previously private, held by the ExxonMobil subsidiary XTO Energy Incorporated, but the company released the maps to the Texas Railroad Commission while they're in bed together, which regulates oil and gas in the state and made the 
maps available to the public. I, I don't think they are now. Um, they don't make it easy to find because there was a link here for that map and it's now been removed. And there's um, a link and it was for the uh, Texas Standard. And like I said, it's no longer available. So I went to the Wayback Machine and I acquired the map. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I have to laugh. They're probably mad about this. I'll probably get a lot of flack about this. But let's see. The faults in our mist. The subsidiary of ExxonMobil presented this detailed map uh, at a hearing before the Railroad Commission of Texas. Scientists say they are not surprised our area has large faults but needs more information to determine if they pose a hazard. Uh, they got one they call the Big D, evidently because it's so wide and so long. Um, I believe it's over 14 miles long. It could be longer. Like I said, this is no longer available. I got a link to the Wayback Machine um, web address so you can go look at it yourself and read it yourself. But here we got the airport fault. There's actually one, two, three, and then they fork off going towards the no north. They got the, the county line fault. Um, let's see, the Irving fault or Irvine fault. And then the downtown Dallas area. And we got Arlington, Grand Prairie, etc. They also have the wells posted on here. Let me see. I believe. All right. Just one well. It's called, I don't know, Grapevine. Saltwater disposal well approximately nine miles from the um, Irvine seismic event. Okay. And then the little gray dots are all the earthquakes. All right, it says here beneath the surface, the dotted lines on the above map show where these fault lines depths were measured. The direction in which faults dip and how steeply they dip can affect their likelihood of slippage. It even says here the data is expensive to gather and to purchase, which is why it rarely makes its way into the public realm. So you're seeing something here that more than likely is no longer available. Do you live anywhere close to these areas that are shown on this map? I made it a little bit larger. Here we have Interstate 35E, Interstate 635, and we'll bring it down. There's the airport. The fault line, what they call the Big D, goes right through um, Love Field and through the medical district. Okay, and then we got downtown Dallas, Arlington, Grand Prairie. And there's um, a measurement there where you can go. It says two miles. It also says fault line thickness do not necessarily reflect earthquake hazard. Well, no, it's the length of the fault, not how wide it is but yeah they call this one the big d yeah so that's probably the longest of the fault lines it also says his team compared the central and eastern united states with geologically similar parts of the world and predicted that dallas fort worth residents could realistically expect a magnitude six tremor but he said he could not rule out an earthquake in the seven magnitude can you imagine the disaster a magnitude six or seven for the dallas fort worth area or actually anywhere there in texas according to the usgs a magnitude six earthquake would cause slight to moderate damage in well-built ordinary structures since when are any of these buildings well built to earthquake standards um, but Peterson said damage could be more serious, especially in their urban areas. Um, a magnitude 5.6 earthquake that struck near Prague, Oklahoma in 2011 injured at least two people, buckled part of the highway, 
and destroyed 14 homes. You got to figure that's a very sparse populated area. Um, according to the USGS seminary, the 2014 six magnitude quake in Napa, California, injured more than 250 people and caused a half a billion dollars worth of damage. Yeah, and Napa is nothing compared to Dallas, Fort Worth area, is it? Yeah, I'm always finding interesting little tidbits of stuff. I hope you enjoyed it. If so, please thumbs up my video. Please share. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you for subscribing. As always, please stay safe. Be prepared. And I'll talk to you later. God bless you all. Bye. Thank you.